Hello, everyone, and welcome to the VIP bi-weekly webinar series. My name is Paul Steinmetz, and we're going to be going over some agency platform pricing, sales, and strategy for local clients. We're going to pick back up where we left off from last week. This will be part two of the recommended go-to services bundle for a local brick-and-mortar client, particularly those who have a desire to be in the Google My Business listing and have the typical local marketing challenges. So how's everyone doing today? And can I get a, a mic check if you can find your comments box out there and, and send me a message? Let me know, can you see my screen okay? Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Fantastic. So what last week, if you remember, we left off with going over the recommended three services to bundle for a local client. Not that it's the only services that can be put together because there's a lot of different services inside of agency platform, but it's going to help for you to have your go-to service bundle for a local client. And does anyone remember what those three services were that I had been recommending? Again. Not that they're ideal for every client, but it's best if you do have a, a go-to services. And what, what are one of the reasons why it's good to have a go-to service recommendation for local clients? Well, because for the majority of small, uh, well, for the majority of marketing agencies in general, their target market happens to be local businesses. So if that's the majority of your target market, having a go-to service to offer them allows you to do what? Well. How about put together marketing materials, maybe a landing page around it, train your sales representatives around it, train yourself around it. So, you know, you can always do custom consulting, custom services, the whole nine yards, but having a default go-to service is necessary. Doesn't mean that you're gonna be a packaged provider and you can't deviate, but you should have your go-to. Vince, you missed last week's, oh man. Hey, I did find out that the webinars are available from inside the dashboard. So as I always like to ask, is there anyone that does not have access to the dashboard? Okay, inside the dashboard, if you go to pre-sale, drop down to marketing library. And from here, Inside the marketing library, you'll see it takes a little bit to load. I think they might be working on why. So whenever it loads up, you're going to see that you can download it, but it should have the ability to stream it off of a Wistia player on the left-hand side here. So if you've missed any of the past webinars, you can come in. Might need to let this load for a bit. And you can go to – boy, I'm not even – I'm on a client and take form. Webinar. Pre-sale marketing library and click on the webinar tab. It seems to be having an issue. You might need to download the video. I'll report that. Is that is anyone else having problems having that load? Okay, so Vince, you said you've already found them on the dashboard. Chat says, yeah, it is slow. I came in here and reported this because I thought they were download only, and then if you let it load for long enough, it'll allow you to stream it. So what's my recommendation? Well, if you're like me and you have Google Internet at one gig download speed, you could probably click download and download it. Uh, in the time that it would take to load that thing up to stream it. So as you can see, I've let it load for a while, and now I've got it. So I guess that's the secret for now. You'd be able to go in, if uh, you remember, learn the dashboard features of agency platform we've gone over. We also went over in-depth training on local SEO and GMB optimization services. So, you know, there's a lot to be said about the local SEO and GMB services that we offer. We went over that in a webinar, so that one's there. Lead generation audit, using audit reports for lead generation. We went over the audit report, how to use them to convert clients, what portions are good 
to, to talk about with the client, which ones you might not want to talk about too much, how to put them on your website, and also well, we talked about creating landing pages with the audit page with the audits and more. So whenever it comes to integrating agency platforms, lead generation auditing tools into your own site and sales efforts, that's the webinar. Google search results, um, let's see, that one wasn't us. So. And then we have here, bundling services for local clients. This would have been last week's webinar. And I'm seeing some duplicates on here, so. Clearly, they've got some work to do on this. I will make some notes on getting this fixed. Give me one second here. Okay, otherwise, does anyone have any feedback you want to give a shout out on from last week? If you're on about the services, I said, hey, why don't you take a bit of time? We're going to meet. Uh, I'm sorry, it's been two weeks. Last webinar that we had. Uh, and. Any, did any of you go to look at the services in more detail? Try to put together your own local go-to services bundle for your clients, and if so, is there you want to share anything that you came back with? Pricing can get <clears throat> tricky sometimes whenever you're trying to figure it out on several different services at different intervals, but that's why we're here to go over it. So I'm going to quickly recap what we went over last time because not everyone was on here. Again, to get to the services, you can go to start a new project, get to the pricing, click on any of the services, download and compare pricing and plans, and I will share this link over here. Okay, so inside of the agency platform pricing, if you remember, we went over the local SEO and the different ways to price these for clients. Just keep in mind as a reminder, we talked about this a lot more, last VIP webinar, which is in the marketing library. You can price these according to how it's laid out right now, but as a reminder, each interval up in service, which goes from left to right, has more workload to it. You, it allows you to add more geo targets with the higher plan that you choose, but you do not have to. Regardless of how many geo targets you choose, we will put the same workload into the entire campaign, which would mean what? It means if you choose less geo targets, we're going to put more work into whatever geo targets you're listing down. Whether or not you're going with a regional two and you chose one geo target or up to four, either you could put a very large workload of regional two into one geo target, or you could put a work the equivalent workload into four geo targets. And does that mean that you would be diluting workload into four different separate directions? Well, a bit, not entirely. So from a pricing standpoint, keep in mind, you could have one geo target and look at this as having five different performance levels of packages to choose from. On the flip side, you could look at this as having the ability to target either one or up to four different geo targets, right? And then uh, you can also consult the client and let them know, well, how many geo targets do you want to target? And then how competitive of a campaign do you want it to be? So we went over that training last time. Does anyone have any questions about that before I move on as we're just recapping? Uh, reading out some comments here. Joe says, I went to a law office with local regional one. Fantastic. And email marketing. A lot of people need email marketing. Okay, uh, Chad, remind me later on for a Dropbox link to the case studies from last week. I'll have to dig it up. Uh, alternatively, I do want to point out, if you're inside the dashboard and you click on this nice little chat window, uh, you'll see that we have implemented a new customer support system, which we're utilizing Intercom for. And... So if, for example, Chad, you would like to fish out the, the link to the PDF case studies from the last 
webinar, feel free to jump in here and test out that support system and request it. Okay, so no questions on the local SEO side. Now, last time, the next thing that we went over, and of course, I, I think it's pretty obvious why I recommended the local SEO for local clients, because they want to show up in the Google My Business listing, right? And then where else do they want to show up at? They also want to show up organically below the Google My Business listing. And also, uh, there's the other components to branding that go along with the local SEO campaigns, like creating all of their citations and getting them out there, press releases, even a magazine interview, and a lot of other content publications to get their backlinks up, right? Okay, and then the second thing that I recommended in the local business marketing trifecta was the pay-per-click retargeting plans. Now, it's not just retargeting, right? It also, uh, it's the, sorry, I think I'm on the wrong one. It was the retargeting and display. Am I seeing this? differently or okay this is the display remarketing dynamic ad setup okay so this is the retargeting and the display right uh thank you catherine for the link to the case studies you know i before i i launched this webinar i tried to make the chat public killing me I cannot copy that link I don't know why okay here we go so if you're looking for a Dropbox link to the case studies here's case studies Dropbox link if you remember those case studies are currently branded to eBrands but we give them give you an editable document that you can put your name on and you have permission to do that I'm not sure what it means whenever there's a handout. Let's try something a bit new on this webinar as well. If anyone would like to come on and chat about anything I'm talking about for a while, whenever you want to chat, I believe there's a feature for you to click to raise your hand. I'm not sure how that works. Give me a shout out in the chat. So if anyone would like to come on and say anything, let me know and we'll try to start bringing people on so that it's not just me talking. Shout out to Casey Stark, another Kansas City local. Maybe Casey wants to come on. Okay, on retargeting. I was very adamant about how to offer retargeting. A lot of agencies have an aversion to offer offering paid advertising to their clients. And the reason for that is, is because maybe you are not a PPC practitioner or a specialist. Maybe you hesitate to have a, a client fund Google AdWords. Or maybe you don't want to get caught up in the consulting back and forth with having to meet with a client each month and say, okay, well, this is how much money we spent in ad spend, and this was the performance that we got off of it, and you're uncomfortable in that situation, not to mention what are the typical management percent fees being charged by agencies on a retail level on top of ad spend? Does anyone know? If your client has a $1,000 ad spend per month, a typical agency that's out there at a retail rate, what percentage of that ad spend would an agency charge at a low point to a high point on a percent level? Uh, let's see. Ka, let's see. Vince, you're saying your screen had shown an overview screen. How do we get to that dashboard when you finish it? Overview. Okay, I'll go back to it. Vince, remind me. So Vince is saying 20%, Brian, 10 to 20%, Catherine, 10 to 20%, Jennifer, 17%, Casey, 20%. So yeah, 20% is right about spot on. 30% would be really, would be retail high. 10% would be low. Now, how do those margins on uh, on total budget compare to SEO? I covered this last time. Well, if you're if you're paying 
200 a month, or if you're paying, let's say, 500 a month for SEO and charging 1,000 or 1,500, if you compare those margins to a 20% of ad spend, they're very low. So how do you get around this, especially with a low budget? First of all, uh, Chad says 0% have a monthly management fee instead. Yeah, Chad, uh, and Chad, what is your monthly management fee? Okay, now I want to I want to be very clear with another reason why a lot of agencies for local clients stay away from paid advertising budget. Uh, does anyone have any idea whenever it comes to paid advertising in the format of a PPC campaign, what kind of a budget a local client should have? Anybody? And it's not just budget, but you you can dial this down to how much whatever it comes to a minimum budget on a ppc campaign what are we talking about here well we're talking whenever it comes to a minimum budget it's for me it's not just what's the minimum amount of money do they need to spend for for us to be able to bring them a positive roi well i grade minimum budget particularly for a local client based on oh brian's on top of it how many clicks per day do we need to drive to them for us to be able to analyze it to understand what needs to be modified in the campaign so that we can make a halfway educated attempt to optimize the campaign how are we supposed to not to optimize a cost per click paid advertising campaign if we don't have any data to look at it's very hard to do so you know one of the problems with a very, very low budget PPC, cost per click based paid advertising campaign, is that we need enough budget going into it to allow enough data based on clicks to be able to optimize it. So Brian gave a shout out, thank you very much. Brian said, you need to be running a paid advertising campaign to get 10 clicks per day, uh, which would be sufficient enough to analyze that campaign at a bare minimum. Yeah. Uh, 10 clicks would be the lowest. I've heard as high as 18 clicks, uh, but 10 clicks per day. So what are we looking at? What's an average cost per click for a, a client, local client? And I promise I'll, I'll get over this and we'll get on to the third part of the trifecta, which is going to be the social media marketing. But we didn't really get through this part all the way last time. So uh, how much does it cost per click on a local client? I know it's a big general question. Give me a range. What, 50 cents a click, 25 cents a click, 30 cents a click? Yep, somewhere in the range of normally, you'd be lucky to get $1 a click, but as high as five, uh, well, as high as $10 a click, you'd probably be looking in the range of, let's say, to just to be safe with it, $2 to $5 per click. That sound fair? Okay, well, if you need 10 clicks a day, and you could take 10 times 30, which is going to be, 300 and at a lowest of about you can imagine probably at, at two dollars per click you're looking at, at around six hundred dollars in ad spend right so point being one of the things that turns off people from offering pay-per-click is that it adds a lot of budget onto the client's marketing expense because they need to be able to fund the adwords direct Okay, so the reason why I say as part of the local business uh, marketing bundle trifecta to include pay-per-click retargeting and display ads is because you, we want you to be able to also have another way of generating traffic for that client. So of course, what is it, 95 to 98% of people who land on the client site is not going to leave their contact information and they're not going to convert. So to be able to apply retargeting is gonna be a really big deal. Now, uh, on top of the retargeting, we can have the text ads, the image ads, and et cetera. As we went over last time, in terms of retar re remarketing, you should be able to fund in uh, less than $50 a month, maybe $25 a month into the AdWords account, and it's a $49 management fee. And then plus it can also run the retarget the, the ads on the displayed network as well. So you would be able to let them know that you're going to be running paid ads to advertise towards those who have already come to the website and also those who can be targeted through the display network. Anyone have any questions on that now that I've revisited it? The main difference with this is you don't have to 
tell the client to fund the AdWords account. You don't have to tell the client that they need to have a large budget to be able to afford cost per click. This is based on value because of the number of impressions based on the ads that are going to be going on out there. Any questions on this? Okay. So from here on the trying factor, the, the third part of the local marketing bundle that I recommend is the social media marketing campaigns. Now, these are important because every local client needs to be keeping up with their social media publishing, some more than others. So you might have some clients that are already managing their own social media marketing services, right? But it would be good if you can offer them, for example, to, if you're, well, if you're already running a marketing campaign, you have access to the, if I go in here to the dashboard, I've logged in, this is the overview, maybe uh, Vince, this is what you were looking for. On the overview, if they come in here and if you're gonna look, at, click on a demo project and if we're going to go into social media overview, Keep in mind, this is unlocked for you if you're already running, for example, a local marketing campaign for them. If they're not keeping up with their social media publishing, you can offer them this tool to use, which is kind of, you know, it's a social media publishing and analytics tool, and it will compete with the other ones that are in the market to manage their own social media. So it's, and it's free once you're running a campaign. Now, of course, when you check in with them with their monthly meetings, they're not going to be keeping up with their social media publishing. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just come in and buy a package and we would custom write the content for each client and publish it for them right inside of the centralized dashboard and they could improve it from the dashboard as well. So that's social media publishing is important. I want to point out with the social media publishing on the smaller options in here. It can be simply presented to the client as you need to keep up with your branding, right? There, there's certain levels of marketing services you can offer, and some of them can simply keep the client from being embarrassed about their online image. And it is embarrassing to local businesses if they haven't posted to their Facebook in a long time or their other social media sites. I check websites all the time. Whenever I see a website with a Google Plus and a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram icon. I, I addictively click on those and I look at them. They're always outdated. Someone hasn't published on them in at least a, several months. It makes you wonder if they're even in business, if you found them by that channel. So it's a very, very easy sell on the social media side. With that being said, let's take a look at these social media solutions. Okay, and I'll get to the questions, a couple questions posted about retargeting here in a second. So on social media, it starts with the best deal at the smallest, it is as low as $79 a month, and it goes clear up to titanium. And we have, uh, along with this, it would also create their design presence, which there's actually, not to get too distracted, but let me scroll down. There was a, okay, yeah. Before I forget to mention it, if your client you're looking at does not have any social media design at all, it would be wise to, add, to offer for them to centralize the design of their brand online so that whenever someone goes, whether it's to their website or their YouTube channel or their Twitter or their Facebook, that they have centralized design. Anyone that cares about their brand is going to care about this. So. If you want to offer them just a design solution for their online presence, a lot of companies are going to be interested in that. <clears throat> so the design services, if you keep scrolling down on the pricing, you would come to a la carte social media services for design. So if you'd like for us to design a Twitter background, cover image, Google Plus images, YouTube channel, Facebook, our Facebook custom tab, keep in mind those services are in there on the design. Those would be one-time charges. And then let me come back up to social media plans. Okay, so on this, you'd be able to come in and address what are the main things that a local business is going to want to set up and to make sure that they are publishing in. Now, 
on the lower social media plan, we include the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Google+. Facebook is normal, right? And by the way, on a Facebook fan page, that could also be a Facebook business page, right? I mean, it's the same thing. And then there's the Twitter, makes sense. And by the way, uh, for those of you that don't do, are not maybe uh, real familiar with Twitter, more and more companies are starting to utilize Twitter even for their customer support. So it's another angle of pitching the Twitter. And then there's the Google Plus business page. I have a fairly odd question for you. How many of you put value in Google Plus? Not sure if you know the percent market share of the volume of people in Facebook versus Google Plus. How many of you value Google Plus? So Google Plus was really hot topic, what, starting six years ago? Sorry, I'm just pulling up some statistics to give you some actual data. Chad says he personally doesn't value it. Hi. Oh, Chad, you must be the only person in the world. Anyone else not value Google Plus really high? They've made a lot of shifts with it. And this is taking forever to allow, load these, this data. Okay, that's why I got a timeout. I'm pulling this data up and taking time to because I think that whenever you go to approach a client about Google Plus, they may ask you the same question, which is, well, why would I care about Google Plus? Okay, I finally found some data. Well, I cannot find Google Plus in the top anywhere. Point being, Google Plus is not that that popular. The reason why it's nice to have Google Plus up is because it can help to influence your Google environment. As you know, the algorithm to rank, whether it's in the GMB or in the organic Google rankings, is not published. It's a private algorithm to Google. Do we understand it to a fairly heavy extent? Is there a lot of studies that are done on it? Yes, but in the end, it is still a secret. So one of the things that all the top consultants agree on is that the more accounts and presence that you have within Google Real Estate for a company, the better impact it's gonna have on your rankings and your branding in Google, which will help you with your GMB and organic. So it doesn't hurt to have your Google Plus set up and to be publishing to it. Uh, it's a very common addition to a, a GMB or a local SEO. So we like to include it, if nothing else, if nothing more than because it's a Google Real Estate and it has a Google Plus business page and it does have an influencing factor on the GMB. You'll be hard pressed to find any consultant out there that's published studies that does not say the Google Plus business page has nothing to do with GMP, G, GMB ranking impact. So that's why. Otherwise, Facebook and Twitter make sense, right? And then if your client asks you why the GMB, well, because it's important. So we would set those up in the smallest package. And then if you're wanting to mix and match any of these, you can contact a sales rep and ask to have a custom package put together. Content posting. So we would do uh, 10 text-based business posts per month, 10 motivational or non-branded business posts per month, and then we do, do include basic images with image postings. And this is all for $79 a month, right? So you're gonna get about 20 posts per month that are text-based and will have images. And then it will include the dashboard analytics worth $120 free. So we have what's called a social pulse and a tweet pro. I won't go over that today, but it's additional social media technologies that we throw in. 
and then we have our normal reporting, right? So basically it's $80 for the setup of the accounts and monthly publishing to those accounts of 20 posts a month. It's just gonna be publishing. The next step up from that is gonna be the social smart. Now keep in mind on the lowest rate, at least it keeps their social media publishing up to date. It will organize it within the professional dashboard and allow them to approve them before they're being published. On the social smart, we're gonna focus on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, can set up the accounts for you. And then it's the same amount of publishing. We also include spam monitoring for that. And then of course, pin images provided by the client of up to 20 per month. If you're wanting to get more aggressive with the amount of publishing, it's just gonna go up from there. And if you wanna add on more social media outlets, you can from there. I do wanna point out, although they are not yet loaded into the dashboard, if you wanted to be able to contact your sales associate and ask just for a Twitter publishing campaign or Facebook publishing campaign, you can do that. Okay, Bob, thanks for the shout out. Bob says, FYI, if you go to, sorry, here. FYI, if you go to pricing and packages, so if I go to pre sale and pricing and packages, Bob says there is a new 2018. Bob, are you saying that this is a different document than what I'm currently looking at? It currently looks the same to me, but maybe I'm off. Bob, I'll let you verify that before I dig into it much more. Yeah, well, I'd like to get to the bottom of that, Bob, if yours is different. Let's see. Do you want to have a pricing document that's different than the one I'm going over? Okay, let me try this one more time. Pricing a package. Let's see if I can view it. Header. My pricing package says, yeah, it's the same one I keep going over. Hey, Bob, do you want to do me a favor? Button yours up and throw it over. Oh, there you go. Try this. Okay. Interesting. I don't know why your dashboard would have a different pricing document. Um, well. Is anyone currently offering social media marketing services to your clients? Okay. Strategy-based social media services. Yeah, we get into the strategy base quite a bit. Let me get back over to the services while I was just keen to find out real quick if there's different pricing. Yeah, these are the ones that were released that I didn't know were accessible. Bob, you might have found a unique link that's not available to others, so I'll probably bring this up a bit later. The, uh, well, Bob, can you, sorry about the back and forth guys and hesitating a bit here, but if I can hand this pricing out to everyone else, that'd be fantastic. Bob, where did you find this? I've seen this document before, but I didn't know that it was released in the dashboard yet. So excuse my ignorance on this. Okay. Well, I reached out through chat to AP and I can throw this link out to everyone.
So I'm typing in the global chat right now, 2000, near 2018 pricing document to view. Okay. There it is. So that's the PDF that we're showing. Now I just got done telling you for the social media marketing packages that you would be able to find just the, uh, let me flip over to, sorry. Just find this Facebook. I'm seeing if they're in here so that I can shortcut you some time of having to track them down. Okay, well, yeah, some of them are in here. So the social media optimization basic, it's just pretty much presented in a different format, right? You still are welcome to write in because I don't even see them on here. Again, it's not just if you're needing what the, the isolated Facebook or Twitter or Instagram marketing packages, but also any other custom solutions. So in short, that's still my recommended local client trifecta is to offer them at, at least the most baseline publishing solution to keep up with their social media publishing most of them do not and you can cover as many different social media accounts as you want and then to offer the local seo right on top of that make sure that you do throw on the retargeting and the display because it costs a very small amount of money and it's going to add a lot of credibility to what you're doing. Business owners are gonna love it whenever they click on their own site. Now everywhere they go, they see a visual representation of their brand throughout their entire Google Display Network, right? So that, that's the really the, the local trifecta I would start with. And then uh, from there, of course, it's gonna get more complex. And, oh, wow, I do not see all these additional questions. Okay, so I'm going to take a while and read out these questions. Casey said, is the marketing the same as retargeting for your terminology? Yes, it is. Uh, yes, I did make the um, download to the service, new services 2018 document accessible to all of you. Okay, well, hey, thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Now, in terms of, uh, yes, local clients that have multiple locations and how to deal with that and co custom uh, marketing quotes, you, uh, again, you can always go in pre-sale and you can go to plan recommendations and request a recommendation. You're also welcome to schedule a meeting with me if you have clients that are difficult to figure out. Sometimes it depends. I mean, it's, it's, it can be difficult to put together custom services. Now, in terms of getting these services bundled together, right, and having a go-to local marketing service, how many of you are still struggling with establishing your own marketing agency? And be vocal about this because I'm not gonna talk about this if, if this doesn't apply to anyone. But how many of you are still struggling with putting together your brand? Maybe you're still working on your marketing materials, uh, your proposals, your website. Maybe you don't even have any landing pages. And it would make sense. I mean, you're still trying to figure out services, but you can still make landing services around generic subject matter regarding different marketing categories. So I got two shout outs from people that are still in the development phase of their brand and their marketing company. Any more? I know there's a lot more of you. Okay, I, now I have four. A lot of people are hesitant or just probably taking phone calls or typing elsewhere. I would assume probably half the people on this line are still building out their brand. Uh, Joe says proposals are an issue and I'm doing too much of the work. Okay, well, shout out to that. Anyone want to give Joe a shout out on proposal? proposal software to use. KC says, if retargeting is so affordable, why am I not doing it yet? I'm using PPC with the Google Shopping campaign, but not retargeting. I have no idea, KC. 
you're welcome to schedule a meeting with me and have a chat about that. But you definitely should be, listen, retargeting should be set up for every single client regardless. I don't, I don't care if it's a one-time setup and you want, you want to then walk away from it or not, but I will have a serious debate with anyone that tells me that you don't need to run retargeting for a client. It, it's just, that's not a wise debate to have with me. You'll lose. Uh, uh, let me get a calendar link. Let's see, here we go. Throw my calendar link out there. If you want to schedule a meeting with me, you are welcome to. <clears throat> so Casey, let's talk, man. You're in Kansas City. Schedule a meeting with me. Uh, Chad, yeah, schedule a meeting. Let's talk. I can help you put your service together. Bob, give us a shout out. GoProspero.com. Is that for proposals? I um, I don't know, Bob. Let's see here. Go Prospero. Now, well, here we go. Go Prospero. I don't know. Okay. Boy, they need some. They need some SEO help. They did not come up index whenever I try to find them. I don't know about Go Prospero, but I will give a shout out to Panda Docs. Uh, for this site, blackspockhemp.com. Uh, Casey, schedule a meeting with me. I have a lot of insight into that. I, I do some consulting with a, I do consulting with a marketing agency that's handling marketing behind, um, if you want to call them hemp shops, over 100. So I got a lot of insight into that industry. Bob says might be switching to Proposify. So yeah, if you want Proposal Builder, there are, is Pandadocs and there is Proposify. And I uh, did, okay, I thought my mouse stopped working. What is the secret on why Proposify and Pandadocs is handy? Anyone? There's a secret. There, there's a, a giant secret on why you might want to get in there, even on a free trial. Maybe it's not that big of a secret. Well, let's check out their template gallery, guys. And let's check out their one here. You need to get access to this template gallery when you sign up for free. And I'm just talking about Proposify. So let me show you this. I'm going to show you how to get beautiful proposal templates for digital marketing for free. You ready? Uh, chat to everyone. There's Proposify. So if I go into here and look at this, wow, marketing. Okay, fantastic. And inside of marketing, branding proposal template. Oh, oh, wow, looky here, an SEO proposal template. And let's go to preview template. Overview and goals. It's all written out. Scope of services. Hey, it's all about the same thing. Would this fit us? Absolutely. Time frame. Good enough. Budget. YS. It's all there. And that's just one template. There's a lot of different templates in here. Um, not just SEO, but also there is in marketing. And it, this is also in Pandadoc, social media marketing template. AdWords, a PPC, digital marketing proposal template. I think I've seen this one. This one's actually pretty nice. So, I, I mean, if you just wanted to come in here and grab these images and put them on your own, you'd be able to do that. Of course, using this is nice, but look at all this content. Look, look this is all written out content. It's nice content. You can come in here, grab these proposals if you want. You just steal the content if you wanted to. You don't even have to pay for it. But this is a beautiful layout. This is an absolutely beautiful proposal. And there's your team, whether it's you or anyone else that you want, and a even a templated contract. It's beautiful. And there's a lot of these in there, and they're all specific to digital marketing. So there you go. Uh, send the calendar link. I put my calendar link in the entire chat. Does anyone not get my calendar link? Hopefully I don't get blown up too much. But again, if, if you're, if you're needing general questions and help inside the dashboard with little stuff, please don't schedule with me. You can go into the dashboard 
and you can hit up this little chat in here for a representative that can answer basic questions. If you're looking for some business consulting, if you're looking for some consulting on services to put together, you're welcome to schedule with me. Ah, oh, Vince, you're happy about the proposal builder. Hey man, it helps a lot. I've got all kinds of secrets in my back pocket. I will say whenever it comes to building out uh, your agency and your brand, you know, you can go, you can go to market and my, here's my opinion on going to market as a digital agency. And listen, guys, I've consulted a tremendous amount of marketing agencies over the last decade. There's whenever it comes to creating a brand, right? There's two ways of going to market for me in terms of being a digital agency. One, build up a brand and try to compete with everyone else's brand that's local to you. You understand? So assume that if you're going to go and call a local dentist, they're going to go and look at the websites of other maybe marketing agencies that are in the same area just to do a little bit of competitive analysis. Assume everyone's going to do it. And then you need to make sure that your brand as a design and digital marketing company is up to par or at least above par. Right. And that could take some work. And then uh, you also are going to be worried about things like testimonials and case studies, which we have for you. But what's the other route? What if you wanted to get to market in sales, which is my recommendation, and you didn't want to put all the time and effort into building up a big branded website and setting up all your branded social media accounts and populating your blog and doing all of that? Is there another way that you could go to market as a digital agency in a faster amount of time? Oh, Catherine, you are on it. Catherine says, become a consultant. What does that mean, Catherine? Doesn't a consultant need a full-blown website and an impressive social media presence and a populated blog and all kinds of stuff and services all over the website? And Right? I mean, doesn't a consultant take a tremendous amount of branding and pre digital, digital setup online? Catherine says, they just take care of all those things with outside sources. Let me give you my take on it. So if you want to go to market, my recommendation is, listen, if you're going to build a brand around your digital marketing agency, right, and you're going to, you're going to push traffic to your website, make sure it's above par. I don't care if it's just a one-page website or whether you got a 50-page website. Make sure that it's up to date on its design and it's above par, right? However, if you're not ready to set up a full website and put together your social media um, sites, which you don't have to do, and you're wanting to get to market in sales, well, why would you want to get to market in sales first and then work on your bigger brand as you move forward? Business 101, guys, start making money as soon as you can. Once you start making enough profit to be comfortable, well, then start taking your time and building up other portions of your company. It also doesn't hurt to get to market and sell sooner. And then after you're already running particular services and dealing with clients, you probably know what you would want to invest your time into when it comes to building out particular landing pages or marketing collateral, et cetera. So to become a consultancy, what is the minimum amount of effort that you would need to put into getting yourself a brand online? It happens to be also, as per many sources, one of the number one destinations for a B2B lead generation. Wow, what a concept. The only thing you'd need to set up would be something within a platform that's also the same platform that's by many touted to be the number one destination for B2B lead generation, which happens to be your business model. You're a business and your clients are businesses, which means B2B. What am I talking about here? LinkedIn. So, if you want to get to market as quickly as you can, all you need, you need a LinkedIn profile that's nice and done up really well. It can have endorsements from other people. You could put testimonials that are on there. You could put services that you have on there and you can just advertise yourself as a high end digital marketing consultant that also offers services. Why is this the fastest way to get to market in sales as a digital marketer if you're sitting there and you're like, ah, man, I've got to get these landing pages put together. 
on my website and I've got to get my website put together and I don't know what services I'm offering now. And this is so difficult. I'm in this in-between situation. Maybe you're still looking into different vendors. You're definitely looking at the different services and you're not sure what to put on your website or what to advertise. Well, maybe it would be wiser to get into sales and get some clients up underneath you and then invest the time into that secondary. I'm always um, uh, about self-preservation in business, given the, the dismal business statistics on how many people do not make it, not to discourage anyone, but keeping your eye on sales and profit in a business is important because that's your lifeline to staying alive as a business unless you just happen to have a big bank account. So point being, if you want to go to LinkedIn and create a profile, already have one, and advertise yourself as a consultant, you can simply drive traffic and leads to there and convert from there. How many of you have less than three employees full-time in your entire company? Be honest with me. I won't say your name, nothing to be ashamed of. Some people are being honest, some are not. Okay. Oh, outsourcing. outsourcers kind of counts. But most people either have remote staff helping, virtual assistants, or if they do have another business partner, so you're working remotely. Hey, listen, there, are, there, are, there is a giant trend, particularly in the United States, with staffing executives in work from home positions. Working remotely is a thing of the future. Everything used to be that you had to go into a store to buy something. Now it's you buy it online while sitting at home. And in the future, it's going to be, oh, wow, I used to drive to work, but now I work from home. Now, I know it's not all going to be like that, but a lot of it sh it's shifting towards things like that. So point being, if you have less than three employees, are you more of, uh, is your company more about everyone that you hire an employee? Or whenever I talk to you about your company and we're being fully transparent, is it more about you and who you are and what you are capable of? Oh, well, it's definitely more about you. So then we get into the discussion on what is easier to brand, an individual or a company? So I'll say that one more time and I want you to write this down. What is easy to brand, easier to brand, an individual or a company? Write it down. And think about it. And I'm serious whenever I say think about this. Why? Because I'll bet you that right now there's probably not a single person on this line that can give me your website URL and you are on your homepage and you're branding yourself on the homepage of your agency website. Is there a single person on the line? And you don't have to give me your 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 website, okay? Hey, but if you want to and you want me to pull it up, I certainly will. Is there anyone that has your face branding yourself on the homepage of your agency website? Give me one person. Oh, I did have shout outs. Let me know if I can show your website. I have two. Spoke. You guys are impressing me. Okay. Uh, Cedric, are you giving me permission to show your website? Okay. Let's see what Cedric has going on. And Cedric, uh, why are you branding yourself? And Cedric, are you available to talk? Can I un? Can I turn on your microphone? And can I figure out how to do that? Okay, Cedric, we're going to, you will be, Cedric is going to be the first person that has ever spoken besides me. <sighs> okay, Cedric, testing mic. You are unmuted, Cedric. Okay, anyone that else that shared, uh, KC, Chad, 
you shared a link that you are available uh, to be found on your website. Are you interested in talking about that? Cedric, I cannot hear you. Can anyone else hear Cedric? Cedric uh, showed you as self-muted. Now you're unmuted. No one else can hear Cedric. Cedric, you almost made agency platform history as being the first person to speak on here as a guest speaker, and your mic is not working. Okay, so you're still unmuted, Cedric. If you figure out what's going on with your audio, you might want to look at your audio options. If uh, I'm going to unmute KC in case you feel like chatting, you're welcome to. And I'm also going to unmute Catherine in case you feel like chatting. Uh, and did I have permission to show Casey's site? Casey, are you there? Yeah, I might have a settings issue. I can't hear anybody. Uh, Catherine, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> nice chatting so, with you. Uh, am I able to show your website? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I've got it on the About page, which is the link that I sent you, katherinemaxwell.com forward slash about. Uh, let's see, katherinemaxwell.com. Wow. So, your name is your website. Listen, I am a big fan of this. And, uh, yes, now I'm able to put a face to a name we've spoken before. Yes, we um, have. I <laughs> love your website. I absolutely love it. And you know uh, what my pet peeve is about small digital agencies? Listen, the best marketing agencies in the world are small agencies. They are the people that work from home. They're the practitioners that study, that take the time to handhold their small clients. It's you against reach local people. So why not own it? Why not say, hey, even if you are one man show, I'm not saying Catherine is, but why not brand it? Why not own it? Why not say, uh, why am I better than everyone else in town that's going to charge you an arm and a leg and the big companies? Because I am Catherine Maxwell. So Catherine, talk to me about why are you branding you? Well, Paul, it's a, it's, it's been an interesting journey because uh, my, my company's name is Max Media Web Solutions. And I went by Max Media for years and years, and just recently, within the last, I would say, couple of years, um, decided to go to KatherineMaxwell.com and, and brand myself. And I have to say that everything shifted in perception when people were talking to me. Um, when I was when I was using oh, okay. my company name, um, people thought I just worked for the company. Uh, as soon as I shifted over, there was uh, an increase in respect and um, and regard, and they listened to me better and everything. So it really shifted the authority from the business to my name. And I'm reading your tagline, to be recognized as the authority in your industry. Love it. And you're right. If you don't put yourself on there, one – one, a lot of people, are they, they want the case studies, they want the testimonials, they want as much credibility as they can get because they have uh, self-confidence issues because they don't, a lot of people don't have a brick and a mortar. You don't have a big fancy sign in a big conference room and, um, you know, you don't have the big company, but why not just brand you? And if you don't brand yourself, then you're right. <clears throat> when they talk to you, they'll, they don't know if you're the owner, they don't know who you are, they won't have the respect, but Particularly, if you're the one that's handling the sales in your company, you've got to be branding yourself. I'll bet you had a better uh, success rate closing clients after people visited your site and they're like, oh, my God, I'm talking to Catherine Maxwell. She's probably $500 an hour. My gosh, I better yeah. be short with my time with her. Totally. And, and if you look at the really big Internet marketers, they all use their own name to brand themselves. I like this. You got yourself on, on the computer as well and portfolio ready to talk. And I would assume that if I went into, and I, and I also, oh, wow, I am loving this branded dashboard and who we are. 
this is a really nice website. Did you build this yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, myself and my team. Really nice. Yeah, and you know, uh, to comment on this, this is a one-page website. This is a more of a one-page layout type of a website, right? Uh, you don't have to have a giant, big website and everything else. And I see this button over here for free website audit. And you know you don't have to you don't have to put our site audit wi audit widgets on your site at all. In fact, it might be best not to. But having it on there is really nice. So Catherine, I don't see on here. Let's see if I look at your services. So we talk about your dashboard and your team, and you're not talking about the services at all. You you should probably be the one training on this webinar. You are a perfect example of how to do things right. Can you tell people why you don't detail what exactly the services are that you offer in SEO? Because you're not talking about it at all, really. Because everybody's going to be different. So as soon as you start listing um, a lot of services in detail, they're mm -hmm. going to say, oh, well, they don't do what we want them to do. So then they move on. It's better to stay a little bit high level um, and uh, then you've got an opener for conversation. Now, I see two other members in your company. Mm -hmm. um, are they overseas? Yes. Okay. I love that you own it. You got nice pictures of them. It's well done and you put them on your site. You do have a team and they may be remote, but it does matter. You are well structured. Uh, uh, and for that, you know, some people put icons on their site saying they have 500 employees, which I don't recommend doing, even though we do over here at Agency Platform. But talk to me about the consultant part of this. You said, well, brand yourself as a consultant. I am a giant proponent of branding yourself as a consultant that has the capacity to offer marketing services as well. And here's why. If you are not into hard sales, where I call you up, I'm just gonna, you know, do a hard sale on you, get in, get out, do a pressure sale, then what is the other type of a sale that nearly every single smaller marketing agency utilizes? It's called the consultative sale, which is why there's an audit report to go over, right? And you're involved in this business consultation with them, thus the consultative sale, but what kind of a person would conduct a consultative sale? May it be a consultant? So why not enter into the hemisphere as a consultant, guide them on the best services for them, and then let them know that you can fulfill them and maybe even offer a free consultation. And if you are branding yourself as a consultant, wouldn't that make sense? So Catherine, if, if I was to, interview you in a business magazine or whatever it was and I sat you down and I asked you Miss Catherine Mas Maxwell are you a digital marketing consultant or are you a service provider and you have to choose one or the other and there's no right or wrong answer here but what would you say I think that the safer bet is to be a consultant rather than a digital marketing uh, provider and it really depends on your audience too I mean you and I had a discussion about this and I learned so much and that was if somebody is is looking for basic services yes you can certainly provide them but um, the bigger money and and the better positioning in the marketplace is to say I'll take care of it for you and then they pay directly to those providers and you stay out of that that uh, the crosshair so to speak and you manage it for them you can do that you can do it that way there's different ways to do it but regardless of, of how uh, whether or not you white label or not with your provider my, my one of my main points is is that Branding yourself as a consultant is a welcoming path to a business, and it also 
you can let them know that you have other providers. You don't have to say that you work with agency platform, but you can say that you have multiple providers, you're a high-end consultant, you have worldwide resources at your fingertips, and it's respectable. It's very, very respectable. So my point in um, bringing all this up is, listen, I promise you, Catherine's site took a lot of time to work on. You can, you can create a LinkedIn profile and go to market based on that. And if you approached me with my background and you said, Paul, now this is my background. This is what I do. I'm a consultant for this. I'd like to offer you a free consultation. And what you gave to me to reference based on what you offer and who you are was a LinkedIn profile. I would respect that. I would not shun it. I would not say, oh, what, what a disgrace, a, a digital marketing and design consultant or whatever that's just showing me his LinkedIn profile or her LinkedIn profile. But if that's who you are, that's what you do, you can absolutely run off of LinkedIn. Um, Catherine, have you ever u utilized LinkedIn to generate leads? Yeah, I've got my profile LinkedIn, um, like uh, down at the bottom, there's a an icon and can you I, can click can right it? through to it. Can I show it? Uh, LinkedIn. Okay. And this is like another landing page. Of course, if you don't have a website, you wouldn't have to put it in there. It reads less like a um, resume and more like what can I do for them? Right. And I think a lot of people think of LinkedIn as like a resume. But if you create a LinkedIn profile the right way, it's going to be a, a landing page. I mean, it's going to talk about how fantastic you are, what you offer to them, how to contact you. You can ask your friends and coworkers or whoever, whatever, for endorsements down there at the bottom. Detail out your experience, however big or small. Put your banner up there. Mm -hmm. And listen, for those of you that are able to go out and make phone calls and solicit leads for the right personality, I would I would put the difference between the right positioning off of just a LinkedIn profile versus a website. A lot of the lead conversion is going to come down to who's actually reaching out to leads and who's getting them on the phone. And so that's my two cents that's on it. Catherine, really well done sw switching to branding yourself. There have been a lot of studies done in sales, uh, particularly not just in sales, but even at big corporate levels of what it takes to brand an individual versus what it takes to brand a company. Uh, particularly those of you who have ever had attorneys as marketing clients. You see the big billboards that you drive by, uh, and as, particularly if it, it's an injury attorney, right? Do you see a, a logo of a law firm or is it always a big guy's face and who he is? Car dealerships will do this sometimes. They'll try to brand an individual versus a company. It's a lot easier to brand an individual versus what it takes to brand a company. It takes a tremendous amount of work to get company branding out there to the degree that someone says, oh, that's memorable to me. I would remember that company. I was very fond of that company. But it's a lot easier for you to come on and say, oh, I remember that company. Catherine, the only other thing that I have is feedback on your site. Have you ever thought about putting a video of you speaking to people on the site? Um, or, yeah, you know? as a matter of fact, I'm working on that now. Um, I should have done it a long time ago, but yes, I, absolutely. I think that's really important. It gets people familiar with you so that when they finally meet you or speak to you over the phone, they've got a visual and they they feel as if they know you. So it ups the trust factor. I was, um, as many of you on the line know, I'm the former uh, founder to Endless Rise, which we were the one of the top world competitors to eBrands for a long time. And I went, oh, it had to have been, my gosh, four years and I never branded myself to the company at all. I was probably four or five years in before I started branding myself to the company. I went two years without ever doing a webinar. And then one day, I finally went to the office. I sat down at the conference table and I just shot a video talking to my audience. Just saying, why did I build this company? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why did I 
what do I offer what I think you need? And it was just from the heart. I recorded it, no special effects or anything, rendered it, threw it up on the homepage. The number one thing people talked to me about when they got me on the phone was saying, I signed up with you because of your video that was on your homepage speaking to me. So if you are able to create a video, listen, it doesn't even have to be from, from a video. It could just be a, a great portfolio photo of you like Catherine has and of, of, of an audio recording. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I will respect that as much all day long. I don't really want to watch a video of you talking. I really don't. No offense, Catherine or anybody else. I don't want to watch a video of you talking. And on a mobile phone, I definitely don't want to. But if you have a fantastic photo, then just put audio to it. And I'm going to get the same impact because you don't need to show me anything. But what would you want to say in the video to your client? Yeah. Well, what you want to say is, is hey, I've been there. And you would identify their pain points, which are what? Hey. Let me guess, you're looking for a marketing provider. You're trying to get more leads. You're trying to understand this marketing ball game. You probably Googled it a lot. You found providers that charge a ton to providers that charge a little bit. There's so many things you can do for marketing, but it seems like so few of them work. It's a very scary world. And the truth of the matter is, most businesses go out of business within X amount of years from inception. The majority of marketing efforts will not attain a positive ROI in marketing. So if you don't want to swim those shark waters yourself, I'm here to be able to help you. I'm a consultant for local businesses that helps them figure out what's best for them. I utilize a network of providers worldwide or whatever you do and brand yourself and talk to their pain points and boom, all of a sudden the one man show even becomes the best alternative they could ever have. So it's positioning, it's branding. Catherine, thank you so much for coming on and speaking. Oh, I would love to see you on in two weeks and bring you on again. Uh, uh, so Vince shows up. Oh, you said you met me through David. What's his name? <laughs> I won't say the name. Not that I, I have a problem with it, but Vince, we met before. Can you comment for me, Vince? Did we meet in person? Casey says video has been an amazing lead gen for our site. Awesome. So anyhow, I'm going to wrap this up. Look, for those of you that have not gone to market yet in sales, whenever I talk to agencies specifically, what I tell them is, why are you trying to build up all of this branding and marketing behind services that you've never even offered before or seen ran or know if you ever want to keep and run again? You don't have to build a site that reflects every single thing you're doing. If you're not even have a lead pipeline, why do you need to dial in bots and landing pages and drip email follow-ups and text sequences and everything else? If you don't have a tremendous lead pipeline and traffic, none of that is going to help you because you don't have leads and you don't have traffic. So if you're hurting, if you're trying to just get your first five clients, and if you don't have five clients yet, you shouldn't be thinking about anything else other than sales when you wake up. You don't need to build anything more than a LinkedIn profile to get yourself there. And you just need to be hitting your leads and your sales daily to get that padding there, to get the experience up, to know what you need to build your brand around when you get around to it. So get to market, get on top of it. Stop hesitating is my best recommendation because uh, getting your feet wet makes you know what path you want to walk. I, again, if you'd like to schedule a consultation with me, you're more than welcome to. Beyond simple consultations, there there are agency training. There's an agency training program available through eBrands to contract me where I spend one month consulting with you to get your services aligned, your brands aligned, and your go-to market strategy that's theirs. I talk to agencies that have been spinning their wheels for five years, literally rebirthing themselves every single year and starting back fluctuating revenues up and down sometimes some years down more than others and we're talking about even seven figure agencies but also agencies that are just struggling to break 50,000 a year in profit and there's a big reason for that there's go to market strategies it, you may be a small business but it doesn't mean that big business principles do not apply to you and when you go to market with services and marketing and everything else it actually impacts the small business more than the large business not having proper workflow and structure to how you roll out services and products and go about your lead gen and marketing because you don't have the bandwidth of the big companies. You don't have time to spend circling. The use of your time is so much more vital than big companies. They can be sloppy. They've got money to spend. They've got a lot of employees that they can manage bandwidth on. 
you need to be precise and dialed in. So that's what we offer consulting on as well. So you're welcome to book a meeting with me to talk about that too. And I will wrap up last questions I can answer here. Oh, and to keep in mind, next time we show up to go over this, I'm gonna be talking about, you guessed it, branding your company and getting up what you need to be able to generate leads from a branding perspective. And that's gonna be important because whenever you have a lot of different services that you're offering in the agency platform backend, and there's a lot of them, well, the problem is, is that a lot of people try to turn these into full-blown detailed sales specs on the front side. We're gonna talk about that, but also, as you could probably guess what we're gonna be talking about, and I didn't know it was already released, the 2018 pricing document. So we're gonna be going over more services and pricing in two weeks. Uh, how to book with me. Okay, so that's the final question I need to answer. Let me just copy and paste that again. That's my calendar link. It doesn't highlight for whatever reason. Let me just, I'm sorry, I'll do this one more time. There we go. The, where are the webinars recorded? Where can you find the re replays? You would go inside of your dashboard, go to pre-sales, and you're going to go to, boy, let me get in here. Inside the dashboard, pre-sale, drop down marketing library. So log into your dashboard, go to pre-sale, click marketing library, webinar top left. It's, the trick is let it load for a while and the display to the visualization to click to stream on the left will display. Uh, Joe booked for tomorrow. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe says, how much is a simple consultation? You want to book a quick consultation with me in you know, less than 30 minutes or less. It's, it's free. We, we'll talk. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being on. Hopefully this helps to guide you. We'll be meeting with you again in two weeks time. Until then, remember the live chat available inside of the dashboard. Any questions that you may have, hit up the live chat. You have the phone number. Well, it can help you to consult for your what you, is best for your clients. And my recommendation is to dive in, get some sales running. And that's the best way to learn the system because we I can give you consulting all day long. But if you do have sales that you're able to hit, go ahead and hit them. Get them rolling and feel free to schedule a meeting with me and I, I can talk to you about how to structure services and how to scale your agency front facing. All right, everyone, have a fantastic rest of your week. Have a great weekend and I'll be back on two weeks, same place, same time. Take care, everyone.